Hey everybody, welcome back today to Retro Tech, and I have a special treat for you. I'm going to be covering a brand new monitor today, and I'm also going to tease you with this wonderfully large Sony PVM2950Q that did show up to the shop this week to be serviced. So that could be a little teaser on one of the things that will be coming up in the next quarter on Retro Tech. We'll be going through and servicing this and making it nice and clean and ready for uh, the person who it belonged to. But today, again, we're going to be getting into a brand new monitor, completely the opposite of the 2950. It is a BVMD series, a nine inch monitor. So one of the tiny little guys, I just wanted to, before I get started into the main video, I wanted to show you just some of the interesting uh, things about this particular monitor. Now there's a picture of it down here. And that's the D BVM D9H5U. That's the one we're looking at today. I wanted to show you this. It actually had a lithium ion battery pack. Now I've not seen one of these battery packs, but there definitely is a battery pack for this monitor in case you uh, ever do come across one. That means you could use it fully in the field without any kind of power needs. Now, some of the other important statistics on this monitor. First off, it does have a high-resolution tube that is 9 inches, and when it's in 4x3 mode, it does have a TV line count of 450 TV lines. And I will tell you that it's extra sharp because of the BVM and the power that the BVM has. Now, if you do squish your TV screen down to 16x9, on this monitor, it will limit your TV lines to 340 and you will want to pay attention to which, uh, which one of these D-series or any really BVM that you get. You want to make sure you know the exact model you're looking at so that you know what you need. Because a lot of these did have a la carte monitors, meaning that there were just sometimes we just get a monitor with no additional inputs or accessories. And you could end up needing an additional input card, which they showed up here, or I'm sorry, interface to input with the monitor, like your handheld control unit, 11R, or your 10R control unit, either one of those. So that's just a little bit of information on the monitor. Now, this is the specific monitor I received in the mail, and it was shipped here to me uh, from an eBay sale, and this was a Patreon member. He actually bought it, had it shipped directly to me from the eBay seller, which was from California. And so this was just me unboxing it. It did come in this wonderful, high quality professional flight box that I wanted to show with some accessories in it. And then this front compartment did have the actual uh, mask. It had both the 16 by nine and the four by three mask. So on the back here is a picture of this power supply unit that could be exchanged for a uh, battery pack and then it came with the HD SDI control card uh, or input card and the BKM 129X. I'm going to go ahead and test it for RGB. And you will notice that you do not need terminators on this particular BVM. Now, this BVM did have a couple dings in the case. And uh, overall, I still felt like it was in pretty solid condition. There were some other things I'm going to show you in a second that will need to be repaired, uh, primarily on the bezel. Now, it does have this 16 by 9 mask on currently, so one of the first things we're going to do in a second is change that over to the 4 by 3 mask. But here's a good shot of one of the issues, specifically right here on this bezel. And uh, the power button and all the other buttons, thankfully, were functioning and were not damaged. But this section was extremely loose, and definitely there was some kind of issue going on here. And you could tell it was like that for a while. But there's a lot of controls on this unit, so it's very handy to have in case you have this and other BVMs that you need to, a controller unit for. This can be used for that. So there's uh, a way to get this bezel off and switch these masks around. It's very simple. There's four screws, two on each side, and then you take the screws out, pull the bezel off. It comes off really nice and easy. You can get behind here. Let me move myself out of the picture a little bit. You can come by in here and clean up your tube nicely and, uh, you know, get a lot of that smudge off there and things like that because you want to clean around there and then just slip the other bezel right back on or other mask, I'm sorry, the 4x3 mask, which just looks, I mean, that, that really made it look a thousand times better, um, everything on there with that 4x3 mask, to be honest. 
Uh, so I'm going to show you just a quick alignment check. There is an alignment menu directly in the monitor on this uh, BVM. Once you get in there and you press menu, there's just an alignment setting. And this will let you do a quick uh, alignment adjustment for vertical size, vertical center, horizontal size, horizontal center, and then even pin cushion settings. You can adjust those in this quick menu in case you need to make an adjustment on the fly. Uh, a lot of times you would move these monitors around and just the movement and then setting them up somewhere else. You get a lot of different magnetism uh, based on what environment it had been moved to. So you would need to do quick calibration ch changes. And um, especially if you're going to use this for 240p, which I think a lot of people still are, you're going to have shifts in those ROMs and those programs that's going to shift on the uh, orientation. So you can go in there and it's really nice to be able to use that. Now, what I'm going into right here is the main sub menu. And it's very difficult to see while I've got this checkerboard pattern. I apologize for that. But to get into that, you know, you have to go down to the maintenance menu part of the system configuration menu right off the main menu. So it's the main menu, system configuration menu, and then it'll see maintenance. And that's how you get in and you can get into the master controls and change a lot more settings in there. Lots of settings you can change. And there is a generic password for that, and that is four ones. So it's one, 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 enter. And that'll get you into that menu nine times out of 10. So that's uh, just a quick look and a quick way to get you kind of set on your geometry, but it's always good to go in there and use the controls in the service menu to directly uh, get everything adjusted. But that's a quick look, so it looks pretty good. So the uh, big concern, though, is still going to be the bezel, getting that fixed, and uh, still going to get inside the monitor, and it definitely does need some cleaning and uh, just some overall checking of the uh, condition inside the model. So there's a lot of metal piled in, on top of each other and boards in here. And uh, it's actually quite interesting because this BVM, does the, the flyback actually goes into the side of the monitor. It doesn't go in the top. This is the top of the monitor. It goes in down at the side right over here where I'm actually laying it down on its side right in behind the input cards. And so that was a little bit unusual for a nine inch. Usually they still come in at the top some, and most of the time on other eight inch, older nine, older eight inch, nine inch models of PVMs. So it was an interesting look inside. The next thing I really want to do though, is I want to get the bezel button, whatever you want to call it down here. I want to get that off because uh, something's obviously snapped inside of it and it needs to be fixed. And this is a great opportunity for me to show you uh, some of the plastics repair that I've been working on over the last three months. And uh, we'll also fix up this other end right here where it's really loose. So th thankfully it's pretty easy to get this button off. Uh, let me pull myself and move myself a little bit over out of the way. But she just got four screws, two on each side holding it in, and then you can pull the, um, that's, and it's perfectly safe to move this around like this one is turned off. But then you can pull it out, and then there's just five or six little connection points that are all uh, individual. They're not, you know, you don't have to worry. There, there's not like one that can fit in a different spot. So you just unplug all those, and then you got your button board here. And uh, the button board, it's, I could see what has happened, especially back behind these power button one that's really loose. The actual plastic is snapped in here. I'll show you that. And then this other side has uh, taken a hit where the, uh, the U-shaped bolt has actually gotten a little bit loose. And then it, it took a, a, ju a, a jarring hit and it bent the screws a little bit. So we'll pull them out and straighten those up. That'll be pretty easy. But the big fix is these little things. Let me go back and show you those just quickly. They, um, this is a timeless video, but these are, have both cleanly snapped off and we're still inside there uh, on the screws. So the screws actually go through those are guide holes on the back of the plastic inside this button housing. So we're going to first get everything out. All the little hardware will be taken out and removed. Um, you'll notice I did struggle a little bit with these screws on this side because again, they were bent. So they'll need to be straightened out. Uh, but again, getting all that hardware out first, and then we want to get the circuit boards out. 
but here's a quick look. You can see in there, this side still has the, the little tabs in place. And when I flip it around the other side, you can plainly see right there in the middle where the tabs are actually missing. And this is a look from the other side of the view. So you can see where the uh, U-bolts would actually hit and sit on those. On one side, they were actually halfway through. So while I've got it apart, of course, I'm going to clean the plastic really well and everything else inside of it. I'm going to use brushes, uh, a nice to old toothbrush, as well as an old paintbrush that I've never used for painting, of course, but it's good enough to wipe out the crevices and the little dust and dirt that builds up on the inside of these uh, button boards, and you're not going to do any damage with that. So definitely want to make my surface nice and clean for the next step in this big repair. Uh, now, uh, I do want you to, you know, if you do have something where you have a uh, repair that involves plastic, consider this stuff. This is JB Weld. I was able to get into my local hardware store, and it's the most powerful stuff that they had. But it does come out gray, so it works great on all these old electronics like Sony. But the, the process is mixing that two-part epoxy together and then just using something to apply a little bit of it to one side of the cleanly broken pieces of plastic. And then I'm just going to take some tweezers and reset it and do that on both of those ends and try to get it as centered as possible, make sure there's a nice bond layer around the entire um, part there. And then I did the same thing with the second one. And you'll see that once I got both of them set, I, I took an old capacitor with the long leg, and then I actually took some extra epoxy and kind of built up a little bit of a, a sidewall along the uh, things. And to just, just move them around, make sure they're in a good spot, come back and check them a couple times. But the real ha you know, thing happens 12 hours later when you come back and everything has hardened. And uh, so... This was a completely successful repair, and the new bond is exceedingly high. It's, it's generally higher than the rest of the plastic, so the more likely other parts of this plastic would break before that repaired part did. So there you have it. We have the buttons just reassembled, really easy to put that back together and put those screws back in there, and this thing uh, really came out well. looks brand new. You'd never know that... It had any problems before. Both sides were easily fixed up. The other side, again, just had to have the screws bent and put together. But this was the side that was loose and had the epoxy repair. And that's just a, um, a really easy way to save some of these plastics if you have something break in, say, shipping. Or uh, maybe you drop or have an impact on some of the plastic parts. If you can keep all the pieces together and it's a clean enough break, then you can uh, actually repair it quite well with that JB Weld. So the next step is to, of course, reassemble the button to the main monitor and do some more testing. And so I'm going to pull myself out of the way as I finish up the remainder of our time together today. And we'll talk some more about this monitor and kind of, uh, you know, my th final thoughts on it because it's not the perfect monitor. Now, you'll notice it looks incredibly uh, sharp, and it has a beautiful picture. And one of the really cool features I'm showing you here, I didn't really show you, but it's just a little drop-down stand that pulls out. So you can pull this monitor and uh, you know, set it up in front of you and have it aimed kind of towards your face on a desktop. It actually is quite pleasing to play something like Super Nintendo uh, on this machine, on this monitor, while... Uh, it's propped up like this, and it's a you know a nine inch screen. It's very crisp and clear. The only real issue with it is a sink. It's it's notoriously bad for dropping sink, uh, where that is not normally the case with the other D series, larger D series. For some reason, this nine inch one has continuously had problems with sink. Uh, but you'll have to you know do some more research on that if you're having sync issues because people may have had solutions using some kind of extron syncing device or other kind of sync devices but do plan on having some sync issues that's kind of what prevents this D9 from being the perfect bench test monitor because otherwise you would enjoy this monitor much more if it didn't have the sync issues simply because it does things like go all the way from 240p up to 1080i and you can do all that from one BKM129X uh, input card. And the last thing 
I want to go through is a calibration check. This is post calibration after I've gone through and uh, run the checks and run the calibrations from the service menu. Everything looks pretty good. There is one last thing on here you'll notice sometimes you'll get a purity problem with these smaller monitors. And I found that that was fixed by changing the actual direction that the monitor was pointing. It's always good to check your linearity too. But yeah, just the fact that, you know, whatever direction the monitor was pointing in, in direction, you know, in relative to north could actually affect the purity on my screen. And it did quite a bunch. So just take that into consideration with these monitors if you show I have a or you do have a problem with purity in one of the corners. It could possibly be simply because the monitor is getting a lot of outside magnetism affecting that corner of the screen. And that does happen. So again, here's one last look at this nice little beauty. And then I've got a little, you know, I'm going to show you some close-up footage here first. But then I've got a slideshow because I had to pack this thing back up. And it's going all the way over to France. And so um, I'm interested to see how that goes uh, because I've never shipped one of these overseas. Now, it is just a 9-inch. And normally, I probably wouldn't consider shipping a larger one overseas. But these 9 inches uh, you know, could be safe. And one last thing to mention uh, this uh, card here is extremely loud and noisy when it's plugged in, this HD SDI card. So if you want to take your power supply or your power cords out, turn the monitor off, you can remove this card safely and just leave it out if you're not going to use it. And you'll get rid of the fan noise that comes with it. Because that's the problem with these bigger HD SDI cards is they make a big noise from the fans and it's really annoying. So the last thing I want to show you is this button feature, or the not the button, but the battery feature. So yeah, this power supply just pops right out of this slot by pushing this eject button here and then slides back into place. So imagine if I had a lithium iron ion battery pack, I could just slip a new one in place. And I'm sure that if somebody who's smarter than me uh, could design a nice little battery to fit in here, uh, you know, with modern technology, it would be a lot smaller and probably make it on the go, or it could even possibly redesign a power supply for something smaller. But that's an overview of the Sony BVM D9H5U. And I think we've gone over just about everything. A fully loaded uh, monitor. And I think that, again, if you're looking for a bench monitor, I would not recommend this monitor. I don't think it's really the perfect monitor for that. Uh, but again, it's, it's still pretty, I mean, it's still pretty good. It's got a nice high resolution resolution picture and it looks better than any other smaller monitor I've ever messed with but here again I almost forgot here's a slideshow picture of pictures of my packing so I actually added extra foam and packing on the monitor itself and everything as much as I could squeeze in there to try to add extra packing that I actually taped the box up to make sure that um, it would make it there safely because again all the way to France so we'll have to see how that goes. So the last thing I want to say is anybody who stayed along this long, thank you again for watching. And uh, know that we're going to do some great things coming up in the next couple of months. First off, uh, this month, at the end of this month, is actually the two-year anniversary for RetroTech. And man, what, the, what a wonderful two years it's been. I want to say thank you to everybody in the audience. You'll definitely be hearing more from me coming on that, I've got a lot of crazy, great monitors in the shop. Just right now, I've got an amazing set of D24 monitors, as well as this 2950Q. So we're going to get to use uh, some, we're going to get to work on some of the best monitors available. And I'll give you a behind the scenes look at not just the monitors and what makes them so great, but also uh, how to maintain one if you are lucky enough to own one. So thanks again, everybody, for watching. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.